But now as we talk more about IQ telephony, how people are getting there, what does the solution look like? Now, most of you are probably aware that a lot of our competitors are putting a server-based system out there for IP telephony, right? Is everybody familiar with that? All right, so the server, whether it's a Windows server, whatever it may be, is sitting there doing your call setup, your call teardown, your dial tone, etc. The best availability you can get out of that server is what we call three nines, which means your system is going to be up 99.9% .9 of the time per year. What you're used to in your legacy PBXs is what we call five nines, 99.999, which means your system should only be down about 10 minutes per year. And that's what you're used to with a legacy system. The server-based solutions cannot get you there. Even if they cluster that server, the best they can promise you is four nines availability. And if you think about it, it's because of the operating systems, because of that hard drive sitting there with a mean time of failure three to five years. There's a lot of things that can go wrong and take your system down. Because if you lose that server, guess what? You lose your phone system. Now there are some things you can do for redundancy to build in there. So you, can, you, know, you can set up things to make them redundant, but it's still out of the box. You've got to consider that. Your voicemail is on a server, your ACD is on a server, your call processing is on a server. They have merged some of these servers together, some of our competitors have, and then you've got your gateway as well. In this scenario, out at the remote sites, all you have is a gateway, possibly, or just IP phones out there, and what we call a centralized model. Now, at Shortel, we can do a centralized model as well, but there are several reasons why we don't suggest it. And the biggest one being, if that WAN goes away, what happens to those phones at the remote site? They become paperweights, right? They're just sitting there on the desk doing nothing at that point. And again, we can, they can do some remote survivability. Where they can give you one, one FB out to the, for 911, maybe, and that's about it in, a, in that remote survival situation. To really make it survivable, you've got to grow it quite a bit. And this is just showing what I just talked about with the uh, WAN failure and the remote sites being down. All right, to start adding redundancy in this system, you start adding servers. So now we're adding multiple servers. We've got a call processor here. We've got a call processor at each site. So now you're up to probably three servers pretty easily. As we continue to grow that, if you want redundant voicemail, you've got to think about that as well. The ACD, master ACD, and then a, call, a network manager. manager excuse me. Uh, so you can see how that grows pretty quick. And by the way, if you really want the servers to be redundant and you know, back them up, you've got to do your clustering of servers. Does anybody manage cluster servers today? Anybody? It's probably a real good, yeah, there's one in there to admit it. <laughs> Not a lot of fun, is it? <laughs> so that's why most of you aren't doing it. All right. And that's just showing how you have to duplicate everything at every branch completely, including the servers, et cetera. And that's kind of the complexity piece there, right? <laughs> Believe it or not, that ball travels with us to a lot of trade shows, and that's a pretty big ball. And we put it up on top of the booth, and we have a contest where people can guess how much it weighs, and we give away a bunch of stuff for it. Funny thing is, is that's just a styrofoam ball with a bunch of cables glued to the outside of it. That's all it is. So it doesn't really weigh a whole lot.